Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rigor Webinars. Thank you for joining us today, and we really appreciate your attention to this important topic that we wanted to discuss with you today. Uh, but first, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Nikolai, and I'm in charge of the sales and marketing at Rigor. It is my pleasure to meet you, everyone, on this webinar. Uh, and um, I wanted to make sure that you all know first how to connect with us. Uh, we usually get to the end of the webinar and it's sometimes kind of rushed through how do, we, how do we offer ourselves on the internet. So now you can see that we are on Instagram and, our, and all other main social media channels. So feel free to follow us because we try to make sure that we connect with everyone um, through all the different media types. So this is the Instagram and the Twitter, and we're also on Facebook and LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is something that has become very popular lately. Uh, that's where we primarily uh, spread information about the upcoming events and the presentations and the webinars, as well as the industry insights. So do feel free to uh, follow us on LinkedIn, and, and we will be, it will be our pleasure to connect with you. So another channel that we wanted to make sure that everybody gets a chance to see is our YouTube. So today's webinar, as well as all the previous and upcoming webinars, uh, will be hosted on the YouTube channel. However, not in full length. So the benefit of attending the webinar is that you get to see it all at one go, and then you're able to ask questions and get the answers that you might be interested in. However, if you want to revisit some of the content of the webinar, feel free to sign up to the YouTube channel, so subscribe and get the, um, the latest information and the latest videos directly to your mailbox. Okay, so now we're getting to the main part of our show today. It is uh, the, uh, the rigor integrations topic. So I would like to um, go over a quick agenda. So main presenters today are Michael and Glab, whom most of you already know. They will be talking about the integrations in general, as well as we will focus on specific integration programs that we're working with. So it's Microsoft Office, Excel and Outlook, as you can see, uh, email and maps, accounting, um, and e-invoicing. So we will, it's gonna be a very insightful and very energetic as far as the temp goes. So we'll make sure that uh, we cover a lot of ground, however, at the same time. Uh, we, we will have a chance to answer your questions. So please uh, do let us know through the Q&A panel uh, on your control panel or through the chat. Uh, we'll be monitoring throughout the presentation. And once we have a stop in the, mid, uh, in the middle of the presentation, we'll be able to address some of the questions. And of course, there will be a chance to ask, to ask the questions at the end and answer them as well as we will offer to send emails uh, with your questions as well after the presentation. Rigor Integrations, let me introduce you to Michael Maltsev, CEO and founder, who will dive in right on. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to Rigor Webinars. Uh, uh, we will continue today uh, our topics about uh, different aspects of uh, our oil field rentals uh, and services uh, operations software. And um, uh, the first uh, topic today will be rigor integrations, uh, and uh, uh, actually the software integration is a uh, number one trend right now in uh, uh, software development industry. And uh, of course, uh, when we uh, talk about software integration, we need to consider uh, several things. First of all, purpose, of why we need to integrate uh, this uh, piece of software with another piece of software, what kind of information we need to transfer from one to another and how it will be, uh, um, how it will work. Uh, from a data flow uh, perspective, we can have uh, one way integration or two ways integration. Uh, and one, and we will, if we will have one way, we need to define which one, uh, which uh, software will be primary, which software should be secondary. And of course, there are lots of different methods of the integration. Uh, the most popular and uh, most advanced is uh, application programming interface, where the uh, software build a, a, a specific uh, uh, list of uh, um, the fields uh, where you can fill out and uh, put uh, all, the all the necessary information on a uh, particular manner. 
Uh, it could be email integration. It could be uh, uh, integration with third-party integrators and third-party software, and it could be integration. Uh, there are different different methods. So when we talk about integration, we need to understand those three things. If we talk about oil field data flow and um, the data flow around rigor, we can see that uh, uh, we can have some sort of information uh, coming from CRM systems like sales info uh, to rigor. We can have some uh, information from uh, equipment tracking systems like GPS uh, tracking and uh, uh, which will feed rigor. Uh, and uh, if we talk about other way uh, uh, and uh, the data flow, which uh, can uh, outflow from rigor, it could be invoices, reports, uh, uh, equipment information, oil field service data, and payroll data. So then the um, uh, system which will uh, uh, get this information could be accounting system, payroll system, and e-invoicing, and we will uh, cover uh, some of them today. If we talk about rigor uh, structure, uh, we have several uh, components, uh, uh, and uh, the main component uh, is a rigor cloud, uh, uh, which can be used in office and oil field. Uh, we can have a mobile application which we will connect to the cloud, uh, email notification and reporting, and integration with other systems, as well as integration with a website and uh, 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 building the client portals. The Major why why it's so popular because there are uh, lots of benefits when we integrate one system uh, uh, with another. Uh, first of all, uh, it's elimination of uh, uh, manual entering. So you um, make uh, things efficiently. Uh, reduction in time by eliminating double entering, which is um, a really important thing. Uh, less case stroke errors, we all humans, and uh, sometimes, uh, you know, mistyping, misreading uh, could be a, an issue. Uh, and of course, uh, when we do the integration, the data transfer uh, uh, time uh, become really, really fast. Significant return of investment because um, uh, we set up integration one time and uh, utilize it every day. And of course, uh, uh, when we do the integration, uh, our business can scale very, very fast. Uh, usually, uh, when we talk about integration setup process, uh, we need to discover what we will transfer, how we will transfer data. Then we uh, put some mapping rules uh, for example, if we talk about invoicing um, integration, we will do items and accounts, uh, mapping, ground, uh, grouping items, uh, department classes, taxes, all kinds of different information which uh, uh, will influence uh, on, the, on the process. And um, now when uh, we do uh, yeah, set up uh, bridge, install drivers, or do uh, some kind of different connections. Then we do a test run and uh, enjoy a daily or weekly export data. If we talk about our current picture of the integration, uh, we have different connections with different software uh, and uh, um, we can um, have uh, four different groups. Uh, it will be office uh, packages uh, like Outlook and Excel, it could be at Google uh, services like uh, uh, email and maps. Uh, it will be accounting software and it will be e-invoicing software. So uh, we will consider, we, we will go through all those groups and uh, we'll show you uh, what we have here. Of course, we're thinking about uh, a different uh, uh, connections with different uh, um, software. Uh, and uh, most popular uh, question uh, is about um, GPS tracking. And uh, right now we are in a negotiation process with uh, Geoforce, uh, the leader of the GPS tracking uh, in North America and globally. Uh, uh, accounting, uh, we're considering zero uh, as a, a next uh, uh, integration. And uh, uh, other uh, software could be a DocuSign and uh, RFID 
um, systems, uh, which uh, we are actively looking right now. So uh, I'd like to introduce Gleb Kovitz, our operation manager. He will go through uh, all the integration with uh, Office packages. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. So about rigor integration with uh, Microsoft Office package. So we have uh, two-way integration with uh, Excel. So we can import data from Excel spreadsheets and we can export data from rigor to Excel as well. And we can export reports to, to give you an ability to work with the reports in a most efficient and uh, uh, comfortable way as you used to, to, to do that. Uh, and we have uh, the integration with Microsoft Outlook, which allows us to send uh, different kind of information from rigor to our external recipients through the Microsoft Outlook application. So how the Microsoft Outlook application works in connection with rigor, when we generate the print form of any uh, document in the system in, in rigor, we can, email, we can press the email button and the attachment will be automatically attached to the, our outcoming email in Outlook. And you can send it right away to your uh, external recipient. It's very useful when you communicate with your clients um, extensively. And when you have the recipient email in rigor, it will be automatically put in, in the Outlook email. Data import from Microsoft Excel. So when you prepare your spreadsheets in Excel in a proper way, uh, in a proper format um, for rigor, you can upload this spreadsheet into rigor easily, just selecting what kind of information you'd like to upload into rigor and click choose file, attach your file, Excel, Excel has format and check the data and import it in rigor. We can also export our reports from rigor to Microsoft Excel. It's very easy when you generate any report, you can find the save to Excel button. Just clicking on that button, you receive the Excel report. When we will talk about uh, email and maps integration, uh, it's pretty straightforward process. So uh, in, in terms of uh, our current situation, we have uh, office integration with import data and export data, export reports, outbox, emails, uh, and uh, uh, email and mapping. Uh, it could be a very useful uh, thing when we do uh, email notification about some events in rigor or uh, email uh, reports. Moreover, we can do uh, reports uh, scheduling. We, we can schedule the reports uh, uh, and build a calendar when you need to send uh, some reports to a particular recipient. And of course, uh, uh, we use uh, maps to present current situation about uh, oil field activity in, uh, in, in a map. So uh, email notification and reporting uh, and give you an opportunity to notify your peers about some events in, uh, in rigors. For example, yeah, in here we see the uh, rental agreement. When uh, a salesperson generates rental agreement on a mobile phone, they can notify the office about the new uh, job which needs to be approved. And when it's approved, uh, we will notify back uh, other other guys uh, about the new job incoming, so the operations will be prepared some some sort of uh, uh, and scheduling and dispatching jobs. Uh, another um, point of view, uh, it could be a geolocation and oil field maps, uh, uh, which will show you your services in a map and your uh, equipment in a map. Uh, and uh, uh, it's not a GPS tracking. We uh, enter uh, location coordinates uh, in a location card and just present this information in a, in a map format. This is uh, how works and uh, all, everything is incorporated to rigor. So it's not, uh, uh, need or not required anything from the user, uh, just to, um, open this report and see uh, what kind of information they have. So, um, and I believe that it's, it's time to uh, 
uh, ask those questions uh, and uh, please raise hand or uh, just uh, send us a question and uh, we will uh, give an answer. Thank you, Michael. I've been looking at, the, at some of the questions that have been submitted to us. And uh, the first one that we have is from Andrew. Uh, you spoke about the uh, Microsoft Office integration, but did not mention anything about the Office 365. So does Rigor uh, integrate with Office 365? Um, good point. Uh, so um, the, um, the problem with uh, um, integration with uh, Office 365 that Office 365 is like, uh, located in a, in a cloud, not in the computer. So uh, we still um, uh, trying to uh, connect th those things, but so far we have no particular uh, connection uh, with Office 365. But we are, we are looking for the solution and uh, I believe uh, uh, eventually we will find it. Okay, thank you. Um, another question uh, from Arlene, I think. Does the import function support Microsoft Dynamics Nav? Um, most of uh, uh, our imports done by uh, Excel spreadsheet. So, and I believe that Dynamics uh, as uh, uh, um, Excel as a reporting tool. So, uh, in this case, uh, I, I should say yes. However, uh, we need to use uh, the Microsoft uh, Excel. Okay, thank you. And if it doesn't answer the question you wanted, Arlene, the way you wanted, rather. Uh, we'll definitely talk to you um, in offline mode to, to see how we can resolve that. Any, any other questions? Uh, yes, there's another question. What if we use other accounting software? You mentioned a few right now, but what about any other if we're using? How do we, how do we approach that? Um, we, yes, and uh, I, I should say that uh, most of our integration initiatives uh, uh, dictate by our clients needs and uh, uh, if the client have uh, some problem to connect uh, to a piece of software uh, we try to solve it and uh, I again it, it really depend of a variety of different factors and uh, uh, it's not uh, sometimes it's not very easy thing but uh, we do our best to connect with everything so uh, sometimes it could be a problem with uh, uh, the third party software. Uh, sometimes, uh, I mean, uh, the, not all the software open enough. Uh, and it could be a, a security issue. It could be um, some sort of, um, I, I mean, security issue that uh, the, the, so the, the say third party software not allowed you to do any changes in it. Uh, for rigor and uh, another another question could be uh, the cost of the implementation because uh, in uh, if we talk about a specific software it could be really significant okay thank you and I think um, I would be correct to say that if you have any questions or specific needs uh, for a third-party application that you would like to connect or integrate with rigor just give us a shout let us know through the phone or the email that is right on the screen. And we'll definitely discuss and see what the opportunities are and how we can make it happen for you. Thank you. All right, let's move on to the one of the most interesting part of this webinar because I would like to, uh, to show you how actually the integration works and uh, follow you through the whole step-by-step -step process on how to set up the integration and to run the um, exchange that are between rigor and other software solution. So as you may already know, we, um, we have integration with Sage 50 and uh, QuickBooks uh, desktop applications. We can send purchase invoices, sales invoices, rental invoices, and credit memos generated in rigor to these accounting softwares. And very recently development was the integration with QuickBooks online system. We encourage you to, to pay uh, much attention to this uh, kind of integration because this allows us to exchange the data between two systems in two ways. Um, 
approach. So we can take some information from QuickBooks Online, send it to Rigor, perform some actions in Rigor, generate some documents, and send back to QuickBooks Online. Let's assume that you have the list of customers in QuickBooks. And we need to upload it in Rigor just with, a, with a one or two clicks. We take this list from QuickBooks Online, upload it directly to Rigor, we can change this list in Rigor and send back the uh, adjusted information to QuickBooks Online. So this is very recent development. So we encourage you to join us um, and use this integration. So integration concept, why actually there is a need to connect two softwares? Because we know that in Rigor we have much more information about your operations, much more details, like rental units and unit numbers, the quantity of uh, units that you are providing to your customers, the rental days and uh, rental periods, different services and additional fees. Also, we can track the discounts, different locations of the customers, AFPO number and job number if you work with a different wells. On the other side, QuickBooks aggregates information about operations and this only contain the, contains the purchase, sales, oil food rentals and services in the aggregated form. So when our customers ask us, ask us why we need to connect these two systems, we point out at this uh, approach that in rigor you can have lots, much more details. So data migration from Rigor to QuickBooks. As I already said, we send from Rigor purchase invoices, rental invoices, and sales invoices that you generate in this program to QuickBooks or Sage. In QuickBooks, we have bill and invoice. It's just a little bit different name of the document, but in the, in the sense, it, it's pretty much the same. So how purchase invoice and bill in QuickBooks differs. In purchase invoice in rigor, we have number of the document and date, the same as in bill, vendor and address, also the same, total amount and amount due, and due date and bill due. We, we are showing this just to give you understanding that despite the different names, the information is pretty much the same. The same, pretty much the same is for rental invoices and invoice in QuickBooks. When you migrate the data from one system to another one, the, one of the most important thing is to check the totals and check the amounts that you are going to uh, export from one, one system to another one, just to be consistent with the uh, data migration. Sales invoices, pretty much the same. And now, how we set up the integration. So if you are already using the rigor, you go to settings menu and click on the integration. The integration dialog box opens and you see that you have some different settings that you have to apply in order to establish the integration. First of all, we activate the accounting integration mode and in this case, we select the QuickBooks or you can select Sage 50. If you're located in the United States, it will be Sage Pitch 3. Uh, this system also supported by Rigor. The next step, we have to install the special libraries or drivers to connect two systems between each other. Uh, the, the next step, we have to enter the file path uh, to your QuickBooks uh, database file so the two systems will know how to communicate between each other and you can also select the class tracking if you if you'd like to track your revenue by classes and select unit revenue details if you'd like to export more details from rigor to quickbooks the next step you can set up and you will set up actually the accounting code for taxes. You go to info module, info menu, and select tax schemes. Now click to create and create a new tax scheme. Uh, 
here you can see that you can change the tax rates depending on the date it is active from. So you just add, add a new date, select the tax and enter the rate for this tax from this specific date. And you have to enter the tax code from QuickBooks for every tax scheme. So Rigor and QuickBooks will know how to communicate in regards to this particular tax code. So again, we, when we talk about uh, communication between two systems and exporting data from one to another one, um, you enter the new item uh, for bill in QuickBooks. In Rigor, we have different types of uh, units that you'd like to track. It can be materials, goods, services, and rental units itself. The same for invoices. In the invoice, uh, in rigor, we track rental fee, service fee, and additional fee. So now, how to set up the classes and revenue items in rigor in order to send it to QuickBooks? This is the general step-by-step -step process, but I will explain it in details. First of all, we have to download the template which will allow us to pre perform, uh, prepare the data to send to Rigor. So we go to settings, import data, then we select the type of information that we'd like to upload to Rigor. Now clicking on template, template we are able to open or save the special template designed to prepare the data and uh, upload it to Rigor. Save it on your computer and prepare the spreadsheet. The important note here, note here is don't change the file format. Keep it in XLS format, because if you'll switch to the newer, newer version of the Excel, Rigor will not understand what the type of information is going to be uploaded. The second step, run integration report. Again, go to settings, integration, and click on the integration report button at the below at the bottom and you'll get the integration report and you're now able to save it to Excel. Copy the data from integration report to your Excel template that you have downloaded before in the item column. So all items that you have in rigor should be put in the first column in the Excel spreadsheet. The next step, map your items from QuickBooks with items in rigor. So on the second column where, where you can see external item name or number, you put the item name and number from QuickBooks. I would like to pay your attention specifically to this cell because we don't upload the codes from QuickBooks for the rental items, we upload item name. The next step, save your Excel spreadsheet, go back to Rigor, import data, and choose the file that you have already saved. The data will be uploaded to Rigor, and before you click import, check that everything is good and looks pretty uh, reliable, and click import. You'll get the information that the, when the reference numbers are activated, that means that import data has been done successfully. The next step, if you'd like to set up the classes and departments, go in rigor to info, then departments, and set up your departments. So you're now able to track your rental fee by departments in QuickBooks. And the final step to check that everything has been uploaded correctly. So you can now run integration report and when you have mapped your uh, information with QuickBooks data, you will see that in, in the integration report that all the accounts from QuickBooks have been put in the integration report. So now let's talk about export data from Rigor to QuickBooks. When you set up the integration and everything is good, now you're able to send your invoices generated in Rigor to QuickBooks. Go to accounting menu on the top, then click on export data, and the appeared window, you are able to select the period of uh, the period 
of the time that you um, for, for which you generated invoices. For example, it can be week, month, or the whole quarter or year. And you will see all the invoices that haven't been sent to QuickBooks yet. You are now able to select all the invoices in the list, just clicking on the select all, or just select uh, separate invoices that you'd like to send to QuickBooks. After you select those ones, click on export button, and you'll get the, the notification that invoices have been sent. And last step in QuickBooks, log in to QuickBooks, your database, accept regress certificate. This, only required, this is only required at first time of the integration and check the data that, the data that you have imported from Rigger to QuickBooks. If any questions, please ask us and I will, I, I will, ask, I will answer on that. Thank you, Gleb. I don't think we have any questions right now, but as we mentioned, please do feel free to share them through the uh, Q&A panel uh, on your control panel. So we'll be happy to answer them anytime. So now we're gonna move into the e-invoicing integration. That's a separate um, integration that we have implemented in Rigor, and Michael is gonna shed more light on it. Yes, so the e-invoicing integration, it's probably the most important and crucial topic of uh, uh, Rigor. And uh, when I started uh, Rigor six years ago, I always thinking about integration with Open Invoice and Cortex because uh, uh, when I was a CFO, it was a nightmare uh, to double, triple entering uh, all the information uh, all the invoices uh, uh, to uh, open invoice and cortex and most of the things uh, that was done manually uh, which is uh, really really uh, an inefficient I would say in that way uh, to make a, a right word uh, to use the right words here so um, and um, we tried several times uh, to uh, make uh, the direct connection with uh, Open Voice and Cortex. However, uh, this year we find the uh, service called Entermine Voice and uh, uh, the Entermine Voice uh, uh, gives an, give us an opportunity to have a uh, integration with both of them in uh, simultaneously so we just need to uh, send email to enter my invoice and uh, enter my invoice will convert uh, this invoice to cortex or open invoice so uh, and uh, it's pretty easy uh, to integrate with the service because we just need to generate the right format email and uh, uh, add attachment and uh, enter my invoice uh, did uh, a great job and connect with Cortex and Open Invoice. So uh, how it works uh, in terms of uh, uh, Rigor integration. Uh, we initially set up uh, uh, with Rigor, put the unique email address uh, for Cortex and for Open Invoice. Uh, it will be a 2D separate email addresses. Set up channel and exchange schedule. Understand uh, what kind of information needs to be um, uh, transition from, from rigor to uh, enter my invoice and then uh, enter my invoice split data and uh, move uh, uh, the invoices to Cortex or open invoice. And of course, we need to build a, a Cortex client list and open voice client list in a rigor and regularly submit invoices. Uh, in terms of uh, setup, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, we go to integration, open e-invoicing, click uh, uh, Cortex uh, or open or, or oil decks or both of them uh, put the email address which uh, uh, enter my invoice provide you and uh, uh, build a list of companies uh, which will belong to open invoice or to the Cortex and after that um, uh, the enter my invoice uh, uh, will register a new user uh, for Cortex and for open uh, accordingly and uh, mapping uh, buyers in uh, Cortex and open my voice. Uh, and uh, then uh, we do a test run uh, and start um, uh, adding buyers one by one uh, the, because the, every buyer has their own settings and uh, Sometimes it takes uh, one, two, three days to uh, to add one more buyer. 
and um, uh, from from rigor perspective, uh, uh, we have several requirements. So first of all, uh, uh, it should be uh, uh, a rigor enterprise license uh, uh, for for the modules. Uh, email notification reporting should be as a module of rigor, and uh, email integration should be uh, uh, um, mandatory and uh, uh, attachments uh, could be an optional thing. So, and uh, in terms of um, uh, daily uh, e-invoicing e integration, uh, uh, it works pretty much the same as we do uh, uh, export to uh, QuickBooks. Uh, however, uh, it will be a list of uh, invoices uh, which was not submitted to Open Invoice or um, uh, Cortex, uh, and you will see them in a list. Uh, you will select one or two or many, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, lots of uh, and you can attach uh, different files, uh, like a support documents. It could be a, a PDF uh, a copy of the invoice, sign it uh, documents by client, uh, or any photo, any any kind of documents which you'd like to use for. Um, support your invoice. And uh, when we send everything to uh, enter my invoice, everything will go uh, smoothly. And um, uh, this is a quick demo just to show you how uh, we get documents submitted into Cortex and Open Invoice. You get a unique email address assigned for that client. They send in uh, a PDF and uh, XML it comes out and it just gets emailed into our system. And in about two minutes, uh, that's going to show up uh, into Cortex here. Okay, and I'll just quickly show you the XML file that was uh, inside that was you. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to open up that file. Okay, and so the uh, invoice number uh, is going to be this that gets pushed into Cortex. Okay, and then uh, so we'll go back to our platform, refresh the screen. Okay, refresh the screen. Okay, and there's the new document that's been uh, sent to us, and it says it's already been delivered. So I'm going to go to Cortex and go refresh. And there's the invoice right there. Okay, there's the PDF, and there's all our line items. And then the client, all they need to do is scroll down, go validate and submit because we push it into the draft section. And that's it. Okay, uh, and um, as you saw, uh, it's a, a straightforward process, uh, and uh, uh, from from the user perspective, uh, you uh, click uh, and select invoices in rigor, and uh, they will appear in uh, uh, Cortex or Open Invoice, uh, and uh, it will be um, maybe two, maybe five minutes delay, depending on uh, number of uh, uh, documents you send to, uh, to the system. And we uh, would like to offer you a 15 day free trial for open invoice uh, integration. Um, and uh, uh, you can see how it works for you and uh, as it will be beneficial or not. So this is uh, everything for today. Uh, we showed you how our rigor uh, works with office packages, with uh, emails, uh, uh, how we can uh, set up accounting integration and e-invoicing integration. And please feel free to uh, uh, or, uh, ask your questions and uh, we will be happy to answer. Thank you, Michael. Uh, there's one more question that came in. Uh, and it actually says, let me read it out. Uh, do I need to have a license if um, our users or one particular user only need to receive reports uh, and uh, may or may not access the system? So how do, how do we share reports? Uh, I guess the question is that how do we share reports without uh, the login to the system? Good question, let me ask that. Uh, answer that uh, so yeah you are able to send your reports from rigor to external recipients so there is no need to to connect the people uh, to rigor directly because for example if you have a lot of customers that would need to receive these reports you can just generate the report and uh, assign the external recipients of this report 
One more useful thing is that we can send email report, we can send reports automatically uh, with a prescribed schedule. So let's assume that every Monday or every day at 9, uh, 8 a.m., the specific report will be sent to a particular person. Okay. Thank you, Gleb. Um, yeah, and can I, can I add yeah. one more? So yeah, most of our clients, they utilize this, this option to um, um, send their reports to management team or sales team. So uh, they not utilize licenses at all and reports generated automatically. So it's really useful thing uh, and we will not charge for that. Well, no charge, that sounds great. Uh, thank you, Michael, and thank you, Gleb. So on that note, uh, I would like to thank you again, and we're going to wrap it up for the day. Stay tuned for the next week's webinar uh, and lo log in and sign up for them on our website. Thank you very much for your attention, and we're looking forward to see you. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, and the best way to reach us will be at support at rigor.ca, and uh, we will answer all the questions. Uh, and uh, um, if you will need any specific integration needs, just let us know. Thank you so much and see you next time.